I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Merry Christmas. And welcome to worship this evening. I have just a couple of announcements. First and most importantly, um, I want to make sure that you know that worship happens on Sunday morning at 1030, lessons and carols. So all of the old favorites, all of the familiar stories, and all of the joy of being together as church family. Um, second, we will um, observe the Lord's Supper later in the service. If you are worshiping with us from home, now is a good time to get your elements together. Some kind of bread and some kind of juice uh, will work best, but whatever you have handy is perfectly acceptable so that at home you can partake with us in communion. Um, the table is an open table, so even if this is not your home church, you are home, you are family, and you are welcome at the Lord's table. Um, I'd like to share with you a poem written by my friend, the Reverend Gavin Finefield, and I am using this with his permission. And he wrote it in the last few days, and it's entitled, Wonder As I Wander. This is Christmas Eve. This is the day I wait for all year long. It is here. It is now. You can feel it. It hums. It says it's Christmas Eve. Quick, hurry, take it in, absorb it, feel it, become it. Look, it's Christmas Eve. It's not like any other day. It feels different. It is different. The day moves gracefully. It is filled with wonder. A day that slows down, but also a day that flies. Look, it is after noon. It is getting on in the day. Christmas Eve is anticipation. Christmas Eve is waiting. Christmas Eve is patience. The day grows dimmer and the light is fading. The candles flicker to life. Christmas Eve sings with silent night, holy night, little town of Bethlehem, away in the manger. Christmas Eve is still, still, still. The world quiets. There is no plane in the sky, no train whistle. Take in the moment, be the moment. Let Christmas Eve enter in and you will find Christmas Day. My thanks to my friend Gavin for his permission and for his gift of verse. One of the one of the ways we find Christmas Day is through re reconnecting with friends, family, and loved ones who have been away from us for long periods of time.
joining me in our call to worship. An unmarried teenage girl was invited. Christ into this world. An ordinary carpenter was invited. The shepherds were invited. The magi were invited. And if she was invited, and he was invited, and they were invited, This story is for us. This love is for us. Fam family of faith, this is our invitation. Welcome home. Amen. Please join me in our prayer of the day. Holy God, we've heard this story a million times. Mary and Joseph, the angels, the shepherds. We've heard it a million times. But we want to hear it like it's the first. So move among us, circle back, draw close, crack open our hearts, and fill them with your goodness. Help us to hear what is going to be saying to us the curiosity, joy, and hope. This is an invitation. Come be here with us. Gratefully we pray. Amen. Please join our first carol.
things I did wrong, all the reasons I was a bad person. However, as I have grown, I've realized that's not what this is. Instead, this is a small moment for all of us to pause and recognize that we are not perfect. We are still works in progress, and we want God's help to grow. How powerful is that? Where else in the world does a group of people gather every week and say out loud, I'm sorry, I want to grow, help me get there. So tonight as we pray, remember how powerful this is. This is one small way that we accept God's invitation to deeper faith and life-changing love. Let us pray together now. Holy God, you throw open the door and invite us into relationship, day in and day out. However, instead of running toward you, we dip our toes in the water of this faith. We hold our breath, we play it safe. We struggle to believe that a love so unfettered, so unfiltered, could be for us. As a result, we often deny this worth for ourselves and others. Forgive us for ignoring your invitation to be the people you call us to be. Forgive us for the ways in which we hold back from deeper connection to you or withhold your radical love from others. Open our ears to not only hear your invitation, but to trust that this good news exists even for us. Gratefully, we pray, amen. Family of faith, even when we fail to trust God's love, and even when we fail to love others as we should, God still loves us. That door never closes. So hear and believe this good news. God invites us into a life of faith. God loves us through every season of life. God forgives us when we lose our way and invites us deeper every step of the way. We are loved, invited, claimed, celebrated, and forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me in the responsive reading. In God's house, there is hope. For God loves us too much to leave us just as we are. In God's house, there is peace. For all that separates us from God falls away. In God's house, there is joy. Because God created music and coffee and dance floors and laughter that is contagious and endless rounds of peekaboos with babies. And if those things have God's fingerprints, then God's house surely exudes joy. In God's house, there is love. Because God is love from start to finish, and that love exists for us all. And in the center of our hope, in the center of our peace, in the center of our joy, 
in the center of our love is God, who came to this earth to dwell among us. So tonight we light the Christ candle, for God's love just could not stay away. Welcome, Welcome home. home. Amen. be seated. Will you join me in prayer? Loving God, as your word is read and proclaimed, open our ears to hear, open our eyes to see, and open our hearts to reveal the love that has come down at Christmas. For we pray in the name of Christ, and all God's children say, Amen. Our first lesson this evening comes from the letter of Titus. And these words are written, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. While we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, he it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own, who are zealous for good deeds. Declare these things, exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one look down on you. Here ends the first lesson. noticed this, but very often, and by very often, I mean every year that I've been here up until this year, this nativity scent, the set has been in the back corner. And the ladies, when they decorated the sanctuary and the entire building this year, thought, you know, we have so many beautiful nativity sets we should make sure that they are all front and center. And so this particular set migrated from the back of the room to the front here. And I want to talk for just a minute about the manger and the significance of Christmas Eve, the birth of a child in the manger, a tool, an implement, a vessel, for feeding livestock, cattle, oxen, donkeys. 
This was their dinner plate. This was where they had their hay and maybe some grain. And this also is the vessel that held the Christ child who would grow into the man, the son of God, who would become the bread of life for the world. So when we gather at the manger, remember that this is somebody's dinner table right here. And when we gather at the Lord's table, we gather at the table where we receive the gift of the bread of life. And it all came from far away in a manger, born out of God's love for each of us, for all time. Amen. prophet Isaiah writes these words, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken, as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Here end the words of the prophet. Oh, oh. 
registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it 
were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Home is a feeling. I think the Olive Garden had it right when they started their campaign of advertising saying, when you're here, you're home. They called it Hospitaliano. Well, I declare to you, when you are here at First Presbyterian Church, you are home and you are family. But let's talk just a little bit about that, shall we? I grew up in one house. All of my growing up, I was in my 30s. When my parents sold the house of my childhood and moved to Texas, and I thought, well, it's just not going to be the same. Going home for Christmas is going home to Ohio, where it's cold and gray and snowy. Christmas Eve will not be the same as we quickly, in the last minute, run to McDonald's for a dinner before running off to church for worship leadership and various choir rehearsals before worship. I thought, well, that's going to be quite different from now on because it's just not going to be the same. Imagine my joy and surprise that first year in ministry when a friend of mine came to worship at First Presbyterian Church, and I was going to accompany him to First United Methodist Church for the late, late service. And in between services, we were going for dinner. Imagine the feeling of home when we pulled up to the drive-thru at McDonald's because it was the only place that was open for a quick Christmas Eve dinner. And earlier today, there might have been a Wendy's hamburger and french fries on the menu before worship started. I'm not saying that fast food is a feeling of home, but the practice of fast food on Christmas Eve reminds me of home. It is that feeling that everything is different, but it is okay. Home is a feeling. Home is knowing that you will be greeted by a beloved sister when you walk in the door unbeknownst to her and being the Christmas surprise. Home is a feeling when you are welcomed by stranger, friend, and family because when you're here, your home. Here is this nativity set. There's another one here, a nice lovely porcelain one. There are a couple more in the parlor if you wanted to browse those. Many of you probably have your own sets at home. A stable was home. A feeding manger was a cradle or crib. And there was a place, finally, for Mary and Joseph and the baby to rest. Home is a feeling that we get from this message of God's love that says, you are mine my beloved child, and when you are with me, you are home. 
the birth of a savior, not just any savior, but the savior, the Messiah, God's anointed, is a declaration once and for all that we are home and nothing can put us out of the reach of God's love, God's grace, and God's welcome. So my friends, on this Christmas Eve, it is a homecoming where we welcome one another home as we gather, and more importantly, where we welcome our Savior to the home in our hearts, where we are loved, forgiven, freed, and reconciled, and then inspired to go and do likewise. So embrace that feeling of home and sing out with joy to the world. Amen. Will you please stand and let us sing? Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. God of shepherds and angels, God of starlight and seekers, God of mangers and young mothers, it is almost Christmas. It's almost here. We are close to home. It feels like we have been waiting so long for this night amidst the hustle and bustle of the busy buying season. We have been waiting for a quiet, a calm, a stillness. We have been waiting for good news that changes us and for the unedible, un undeniable sense that you are near. So in this moment, surrounded by a community in the presence of a candlelight and hallelujahs, we bow our heads and give thanks. Thank you, God, for the places and people that feel like home. Thank you for the hope 
on the horizon which carries us through. Thank you for moments of worship that break open our hearts. Thank you for the joy of children on this night, which remind us of love. And thank you for the stars in the sky, which remind us of you. We have so much to be grateful for. However, even amidst our prayers and gratitude and joy, we also bring you prayers of concern. For when the music is quiet and the clouds clear, we can finally hear our own thoughts and see sky above us. And that is when there is enough space for her to float to the surface. We know we are close to home, God, but we also know we are not home yet and that truth aches in us. So many of us are still seeking, still looking for a place to belong, still searching for a faith that feels like home. We are closer to home, but we're not there yet. We are only truly home when we are with you. So God of starlight and angels, choruses, on this Christmas Eve, as you come, dwell among us. We pray that you would bring us closer home to you. Scoop us up, draw us in, build the world you have in mind for us. Hover here, hear our prayers, take this grief and pain off our shoulders, and hold our hands as we walk through the dark. It is almost Christmas. It's almost here. We can feel it. We are close to home. Amen.
Jesus was not born in a real home. He was born into poverty. He was born into simplicity. He was born in a manger in Bethlehem. And despite the little he might have had, Jesus spent the rest of his days on earth giving to others. Generosity is in the DNA of our faith. We give what we can, not because we should, or because scripture says to. We give because we're family. We give because we belong to one another. We give because we are all invited into God's house. So let us give our tithes and offerings now. Would the ushers please come forward? Glorious God, your story is one that forever invites us to be our, f our full selves, to take up space, to go where we feel called, and allow this community to feel like home. So use these gifts to keep building your home here. With gratitude as tall as a ceiling, we pray, amen.
My friends, it is said that they will come from north and south and east and west to sit at the Lord's table in the kingdom of heaven. But this is not the table of First Presbyterian Church. This is the Lord's table. And the Lord invites those who wish to know him to become closer to him, to come and partake of the abundant feast that has been prepared. Will you join me in prayer? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks and praise to the Lord our God. Holy, God, holy are you, embracing God. For through your word all things came into being. And without you, not one thing was made. As your word spoke through your covenant, you created a people bound to you through promise and pardon, slavery and exile. You showed that what had come into being through you was life. Your prophets promised that life as a light for all people and spoke of a day of comfort and redemption when ruins and waste places would break forth into song. When that day came and the word became flesh, your angels sang for joy and put a new song into our hearts. And even when we rejected your son, you brought forth from his death a resurrection of everlasting glory. You welcome us as your forgiven people, united in heaven and earth, and joining our voices with angels and archangels in the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Life-giving God, as your word became flesh and lived among us, come among us now in the fullness of your grace and truth. Make us holy as you are holy, that your word may become flesh anew today. Send your Holy Spirit upon this bread and this wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus who gave his life so that we might be set free from sin. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of glory, make your church a sign of newborn hope in your kingdom. Be born in us today. Where your children are faced with ruin, show them redemption. Where sorrow endures, bring your holy comfort. Where division excludes, give your grace. Where bondage confines, sing your new song. Restore our hope in you until the day when all that you have brought into being finds its everlasting destiny in the glory of your Son. When nothing in heaven or on earth falls outside your redeeming purpose and when all things shall be full of grace and truth in you one god father son and holy spirit we offer our prayer in the boldness of children praying as christ taught his disciples saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, our Lord was at table with his disciples and he took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this, remembering me. In the same manner, after the supper, 
our Lord took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, which is sealed in my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Drink all of you of it. The Apostle Paul reminds us that as often as we eat the bread and drink the cup, we proclaim our Lord's saving death until he comes. My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come to the table, all has been prepared. The elders will come and serve the bread with tongs for your waiting hands so that you may receive. Um, we're going to try not to come through the, past the bread and the cup, um, but we'll do what we can. We've got a good crowd. Also, if you do not have a candle, now's the time to indicate to one of our elders, and we'll make sure that you have one for, um, for the candle lighting service. This is the bread of life. God loves you.
This is the cup of salvation. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Welcome home. Let us pray together. Is there anyone who does not have a candle? That's going to be important. Let us pray. Holy and astounding God, with you we are home. You have set an abundant feast to nourish us in body, mind, soul, and spirit. In this meal we have been met by Christ, the reflection of your glory, the imprint of your being. As we go from this place, may our lives be a joyful song, proclaiming the good news of your righteousness and peace for all the world. Amen. As we pass the light of Christ, I will light from the Christ candle. When it is your turn to receive the light, please tip your unlit candle to the lit candle and be sure to beware of the protection so that we don't have any wax burns, okay? As you are able, let us stand and sing together Silent Night.